Aaron Battalion is the reason that I bought crypto so early. He was the former CTO of Living Social, but he's a true technologist, you know, like a real technical nerd. And, you know, and in a jam session, jeez, uh, you know, uh, quite, quite a long time ago, I listened, didn't say goddamn word for two hours as they talked about Bitcoin. It was the first time I'd heard of it. And it was just so over my head for a couple reasons. Unlike you, my friend, even to this day, my ability, my knowledge, even my passion around currency and let's say financier and financial is quite low. It doesn't, it doesn't grip me. It is not my deep passion or understanding. It doesn't come natural to me. Even like the concepts of central banking or trading currencies, it doesn't come natural to me. Um, and I don't love it. But I was very fascinated by this concept of the centralized servers. It was so profound at the time. So that happened. I, I bought some, you know, maybe six or seven coins. I can't even explain how low it was. It was just nothing. Uh, forgot about it. Came back maybe a year or two later, maybe two years later, jam session again. And this time, Aaron Battalion tells me about Ethereum. And that really caught my attention. Because I remember thinking Bitcoin was really cool and amazing and obviously has gone on to become what it became. And I thought of it as like, okay, that needs to become a central brand, like a Nike, like gold, like like God, like school, like a diploma. That's a Harvard, that's a brand game. And if it wins that brand game, that's gonna win. And, and it, by the way, it went on to do that. Yeah. Uh, Ethereum, I was like, oh, building on top of it and like the scale. And it really had these almost like Apple versus Android feelings about it, I remember thinking, right? Ooh, Bitcoin can go on to be Apple and Ethereum could go on to being Android, like a layer for everything else. And so I was very bullish on that and I bought a bunch of that. I remember right around that same time, my brother AJ and I got a bunch of Dogecoin, like the, for free or for a hundredth of a hundredth of a cent. And that was like a period of being hot on it. And and then I would only check in when a tweet or an article for the next two or three or four years caught my attention. I was not going, you know, I was very deep in my business. I was very deep in, in content and social media arbitrage. It wasn't where I was spending my energy. I, I crypto kitties caught my attention later on. And I was like, that really, in the same way that I'm very hot now, the same reason I'm like, ooh, collectibles and trading. Also I was because, like, and I think what's really interesting about your story is you didn't come at this from finance. You came at it seeing different stuff. And I think this is correct. important because this is, I think, where the future lies. So crypto kitties, you see that, you're a marketing guy, and you start to think. And I start to think, I know why people will buy that. If this becomes like Bitcoin, the difference between an NFT and, let's say, a currency is there's a social signaling and a need to communicate it that is by default. When you say to somebody, when you drive a Mercedes Benz or you wear a Rolex or you wear a 4,000 pair of sneakers, you don't have to say something to say something. Yeah. When you're sitting on $4 million or $40 million of Bitcoin, you have to say, hey, I have, you know, and that puts you in a peculiar spot. That's yeah. why cash is different than assets. And I, under, and I understood that and that came natural to me. Yeah, because humans love social signaling. It's a core part of being a human. It, it's the corest. The, you know, like, like to me, communication is what human beings are completely predicated on. It's why I bet the farm on social media, I knew. I knew that there was no way we were gonna let it be a fad. And it's the same way that I know that NFTs will not be a fad. Now, much like social, much like Internet 95, when I first got in and launched winelibrary.com in 96 and 97, which was crazy early to launch a liquor store's website. This is my third cycle back to pattern recognition in 10,000 hours. My biggest concern is that I know 98, maybe even 99% of the current projects of NFTs will be negative investments for the people that view them as long-term investment. Yeah. You know, I think that I think that it's not sustainable around supply and demand. And we haven't even seen the greatest intellectual properties enter the space properly. We've not seen Pokemon go properly yet. We haven't seen Star Wars go properly. Disney, yeah, yet. Disney. Disney go properly, right? And so, uh, and by the way, not to mention most sports outside proper football, a little bit with so rare, and obviously the NBA with Top Shot, but we still don't have the NFL. We have a baseball product on Wax, which you know is, yeah, is okay. And, and in soccer, they've got a bit on Chili's and so you know that Socios project. But you know, music. I mean, where's Jay Z's first NFT or Elvis Presley? So we are in the dawn, dawn, dawn of all of this, and people are spending a lot of money on tokens, on intellectual property that has a very high risk outcome. You know, I, I've 
I've jumped into a couple of projects recently, more, more because I just wanna support more diversity in the NFT space, you know? I, I'm really enjoying some of the female-led projects, some of the minority-led projects. I think it's important to, cause we, you know, collectively, you know, I, I get an incredible high, my friend, on the email of, hey, you showed me this world. Teaching someone how to fish has been my life. I enjoy it. And so, you know, it's tough though with something this new because you're yelling at one thing, hey, this might be the big, big, big thing for the next two decades, comma, 99% of these things are gonna fail. So what's the entry point? You know, it's a very tricky game. I mean, I totally agree. So what gives you the bravery to jump and say, I'm gonna try this out? Because that first step is the dangerous step because as you say, it's so nascent right now that you don't know yeah. where it's going to go. We've all got some ideas and we'll get into that. But how, why did you take the first step or how? Well, lack of fear. You know, I think uh, with me, friends, it was uh, right before Valentine's Day, I remember. So it was like maybe the 13th or the 12th. And I just had that eureka moment. I felt at that point I was ready. I knew enough. I knew exactly what I wanted to do. Dutch auction, on-chain, you know, uh, utility-based heavily to hedge, you know, the fact that I wanted to build a 40-year intellectual property that I'm gonna do cartoons and video games and sweatshirts and toys. And, you know, I, I jumped in because I knew I wasn't gonna lose. So even when I look at, you know, Facebook DM that's coming, right? People think it's the stable coin. It's actually the world's biggest community token. Yeah, that's it won't right. go up and down in value with the value of the network. But that's where this is all going, right? You can coalesce massive groups of people with a community token, share the economics, and it drives network effects. All they wanna do is promote you and the product. In theory, it's actually a very simplistic concept, right? If you decentralize, well, what's left? The humans that create the demand and the community that it supports. That's right. Right? So for me, all those people who cashed in for a quick, this is why patience is the greatest gift. I, To me, my ability to run a marathon versus a sprint, my complete, Think about, think about, I mean, the sheer economics of the people that have already won on my play, and I haven't even launched the three super conferences yet, and all the things I'm actually doing. You know, hopefully in three or four years, to your point, I fully agree with you, hopefully in three or four or five years, when that becomes more obvious to everyone, my friend, and becomes more real. You know, if I have a project under my, under my belt that created extraordinary returns for the people, you know, that made that bet, it surely puts me in a very good spot to get to the next level of scale. And I fully believe that's what's gonna happen. And I feel like the trust of sovereign nations to create currencies that happened long, long, long ago will now happen around human individuals. And what is bad about this space is everybody will lump everything in together. So we know Correct. that one of these Correct. big projects is gonna go to zero. Correct. And they will go to you and say, see Gary, it's all a bunch of shit. You're just conning people. I, th and this is the annoying thing. And I'll say, if I was making content in 1999, when I told everybody the internet was the most important thing that had ever happened in our lives, and the stock market collapsed, and it was death on Wall Street, and everybody who invested in pets.com shares went to zero, I would say, okay, but guess what? Amazon's five bucks a share. I think you should buy it. Yeah, exactly right. Because when you look back on the chart of the NASDAQ back in 2000, and it's feel really dramatic. It now looks like a little small bump on the road because what came after it was in that. And I think what keeps me calm at night, lets me put my head on my pillow is there is no way NFTs or if, the, by the way, the word NFT could change. That's how early we are. Oh yeah. You know, we called, we called social media web 2.0. Right? We, we called the internet the information superhighway. We used to say, go to HTTP colon www. Like, I don't care what you call it. I can tell you right now that in 2039, people will use digital assets the way they use physical assets to communicate to each other. And there's no doubt in my mind. And physical assets will also be recorded in the blockchain as tokens as well. So we could all buy a property together in Manhattan that's a $50 million apartment and share it amongst 100 people. And, you know, all of this changes dramatically. In a real, in a, you know, your, your point there was funny, back to Aaron Battalion, his first point was leases, mortgages, like when he was explaining the smart contract, it just blew my mind. I'm like, this is incredible. Like, yeah, I don't think we've even begun to, to innovate. How about this? How about if you're lucky enough today to sit with an incredibly unusual property, like a home? Let's That's just right. say you're an extremely wealthy person and you have just a very unique home. Well, I think you blockchain it, and when you sell it, you put in a royalty that says you make 2% on every transaction of this home in perpetuity. Potentially you're you green. Like, right? like I built my house here in Little Cayman. 
And, you know, maybe eventually... Why wouldn't you? Like, I can tell you right now, if you decided to sell it, let's say we became friends over the next 15 years and I wanted to buy it for some reason, right? When you're like, hey, by the way, there's a 1% royalty in the contract, it's not going to matter to me. No. But I'll tell you who it's going to matter to, your great-great-great-great-grandchildren when it changes hands for the fifth time and for some reason they get a $800,000 check in the mail or an $80,000 check in the mail, they're going to be awfully happy with great-great-great-great-great-granddaddy figuring out why he understood the blockchain. 